Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video on this channel and today we have a look which framework is the fastest out there in terms of SSR. It's you. Let's go. When picking a framework, there are lots of different things to consider, right? Like the skills in the team, business requirements, maturity, ecosystem, but of course also performance. And especially when you build a public facing solution like an e-commerce shop, whatever, you need server side rendering for the SEO and other benefits. So well, we want to know which framework is the fastest in terms of SSR. And for that, we have a look at the newly released benchmark um, made by Matteo Colina, who is also working on Node, uh, Fastify, uh, and also um, Jonas Galvez, who is an ex Nuxt uh, core team member, worked on it as well. So let's check it out. If we take a look at the blog post called an SSR performance showdown, we straight away see note that the first iteration of the benchmark, there were a few mistakes summarized by Theo uh, and of course, apologizing for the errors, thank all the contributors to improve things. So let's have a look at the first version, see the results and see what went wrong. And yeah, we skip straight away to the results. This is from the Wayback Machine, it was released, as I said, uh, on Monday and the other piece came out like literally a week ago uh, on Friday last week. So let's jump all the way down here and check out the results. Here we are, SSR performance showdown, what was compared solid, Vue, Svelte, React, and as a baseline Fastify HTML. And this was all done with the Fastify um, framework, so rendering on Fastify. And we see, okay, Fastify HTML, almost up to 1K requests per second, and then solid, a big jump, then to Vue, another big jump, at least between Vue and Svelte, and then React. And from that, you can say like, okay, solid, super fast, amazing. Uh, then view, but half the request, which is quite a bit. Uh, then swelled half of view, whew, and then react a bit lower than that. Uh, nevertheless, there were a few issues. So let's maybe start with what actually was done first, then take a look at the issues that were made, um, and then the new results. And let's then also discuss why this is still not the whole picture. To benchmark this is our performance, we need DOM content. We need nodes in the DOM because we don't need any API calls that would, of course, like uh, taint the results. So the end um, platforming, Matteo and uh, the team decided to render this wonderful spiral based on the code up here, which is the vanilla JavaScript code for that, so to say, in the different frameworks by calculating which divs need to be where and then to, to draw it by just rendering the things out. The good thing is all frameworks used Vite, so the setup was pretty simple for that and then there were each uh, implementations. So that looks good so far, because as I mentioned, it's very important to have actual content to render, not just like have a hello world, because it's still good as a baseline to compare, but well, if you render bigger projects, you have like thousands of DOM nodes, ideally as little as possible, but still, if you show like 60 products on an e-commerce uh, product overview page, each is like a color picker, an image and so on, there will be lots of lots of DOM nodes, not even talking about hovering and so on. So th that totally makes sense. What were the issues though? Actually, all the four implementations had some kind of error or, or mistake or inaccuracy. Uh, Rich Harris here, the author as well, pointed out that the Swell implementation is doing a bit more than others and also sent a PR to fix that. Um, let's have a look quickly what's happening here. And here is the idea that instead of taking the tiles to draw the spiral we've seen before, instead of saying, okay, we create a new area all the time, just spread it in, well, we can just push it. So that's a bit more idiomatic and it also in plain JavaScript, that would be faster. So that's one thing. Also, apparently, a Swell 3 was used, uh, and Rich also sent a PR for Swell 5, which will release soon, but that's a bit of scope, still saying it's way faster, even with the fixed version. So that's quite interesting. Let's jump into the solid part, because Ryan Cognato, who's well known to be a performance expert, also points out, well, first of all, there were a bunch of extra style bindings in solid, and the other thing is that of course, to make it more comparable to Fastify HTML, which if we remember is the baseline, why not running the whole thing without hydration? I still think it's very interesting because then you see, okay, the framework is just a renderer, but for the benchmark itself, I don't think it helps that much, mainly because it's just made, meant as a full baseline and you don't say, oh, everything should just be a renderer or we ignore hydration. Nevertheless, interesting data and there were issues with the solid implementation as well. When it comes to the React implementation, well, then Abramov sent a PR because apparently React was not running in production mode 
at all. So that also clearly improved the whole scenario from having an average of 185.7 requests up to 722 on his machine, right? So that of course also makes a difference and apparently uh, is because the process node env and variable was not set to production when starting the server. And then there's of course the view implementation. Maybe let's have a closer look what went wrong there. The user Silby, aka Balash Nemet, uh, created a PR to align the implementation also with others. One thing he changed is using shallow ref instead of ref because there the tiles value will always be set and overridden and there is no nested reactivity needed. Then people also pointed out, wait, you don't need any reactivity at all because everything happens in the setup, in the script setup, and there is no interactivity like on button click or in lifecycle hook needed. And he also mentioned that he tested that out. So he tested it before switching to shallow ref and found no improvement at all, which also kind of makes sense because, well, shallow ref has no nested reactivity, there's not that much overhead, and you don't trigger another save. But there's more, because this sparked a whole discussion about scoped styles. This is the other implementation that was changed. Let's have a look at the files again, and here we will see, okay, the whole scoped styles are removed and are then used instead in the indexed HTML, so just insert it in the HTML document. And this apparently led to a really big performance boost from 132 average on his machine up to 336, which is an almost 3x increase. In. And now you might think, wait, 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 Alex, are, are scope styles bad for performance? No, luckily not. The whole discussion about, okay, benchmarks should not test optimized codes for benchmarks, but actually framework idiomatic code is fully correct, and luckily, the issue with the performance difference is also found without a style block. So scope styles are not the culprit. Apparently, this is an issue with Fastify because you also ran the whole thing with H3 instead of Fastify and there is no way of reproducing the issue. So luckily, no, no worries. Uh, we don't have to put a big warning on scope styles. They all work as they should and they're not a performance killer. And then after updating all the implementations, after getting feedback, for example, from Ryan, Things looked fine, and a new and final version of the blog post was published. So let's have a look what it says. And here we are, basically where the video kind of started with exactly that post with the note. So it's not the Wayback Machine one that's over there. That's the one from August 30th. So let's jump to the results. And here we are. Fastify HTML is, of course, still the king with 1,088 requests. But once again, this is, of course, just a baseline. This is not meant to say, hey, this is the best framework, whatever, because this is not, not a framework. It's just a rendering engine. And then on second place, we got view there with 1,028 requests. So surprise, things changed. Now view is up at first place after aligning the implementation and not using something that needs deeply nested reactivity if you don't need to. Also a very good case to just show you, look, if you optimize your code, you can run even faster also in terms of SSR. And after that, we have Svelte, Svelte 5 actually. So that was the pre-release in here, not Svelte uh, 3 or whatever was uh, used in the other test, with 968 requests per second, which is also pretty good. A bit slower than view, but the difference is not now half of view, but more like, okay, like 50, 60 requests less. Fine. Then we have Solid with 907, and it's also pretty close to Svelte and also to view. Then we have the new Preact implementation that was uh, added as well with 717 requests and eventually even running in dev mode React 19 RC with 572 requests per second. And there's also an Angular implementation that was committed, was not added because it might be too late for the article, but numbers don't look too impressive here. Nevertheless, would be interesting to see. And now the big question, what do these results mean to us? Is it like any helpful that we have then? I mean, it's good to know that Vue is apparently the fastest framework in terms of SSR, but if you don't use SSR, it doesn't matter, of course. But even if you do, this was tested under very certain circumstances. Drawing the spiral, which like more or less says, okay, we need some uh, CPU heavy tasks to, to try out SSR, totally fine to, to like actual benchmark it, but also it's only done with Fastify. It's not done with, for example, whatever uh, Nuxt.js uses under hood with, with H3, it's also not done with Express, what's, for example, uh, pretty common if you use Next.js in standalone mode and so on and so on. So it's all focused on Fastify as well. And I already mentioned another point that's quite important, meta frameworks. In the blog post, 
Matteo mentioned that they did not want to consider tools like Next.js, also Nuxt, of course, Astro and Quick, as well as other full-fledged frameworks as they do not offer isolated rendering methods. While this is correct, it is not really how people use SSR, because if people are in need for server-side rendering, they usually reach for a meta framework. So it would also be good to compare the meta frameworks as well as possible with their own renderers, their own optimizations, because this is what matters in projects, right? And Oh wait, finally I did this in my thesis, so we can have a look at some graphs here for one of the scenarios that I built and see how Next, Nux, and Angular compare in terms of requests per second. In this chart we see the requests per second with 100 concurrent users, quote unquote, emulated also with Autocannon in a very simple Hello World scenario. Also this should not be used to say, oh, framework X is better than Y, this is just as a baseline to see what the most minimal example could look like. And here, the request per second, higher is better, same metrics as before. We see uh, metrics with Nux, Next, and Angular, and Nux.js is pretty much ruling here with up to 726 uh, requests per second in the 97.5 percentile. And if we now take a look at uh, the 10 concurrent user example with a blog post, with just a very long blog post, lots of DOM nodes, then of course we don't get like crazy amount of um, requests per second like we did before. Just remember here, 726, but even Angular and uh, Next.js was like around 268, 181. No, we're far away from that here. Here we see 33, 15, 4. Also to be fair, these measurements all also run on a like pretty normal machine. So um, like low, low specs, you can always beef it up with servers, but it's more to see the difference here. And it's pretty interesting, even with like a high DOM load and 10 concurrent users, the H3 uh, server under Nux makes a pretty, pretty good uh, impression while next year's an angle a bit meh. And if you tune it up to 100, well, of course, then the server that was used to host it, that was kind of like creeping down. Um, so we see that one person tile, no request per second at all, but still even here, things can be kept up. And I think this is more relevant and interesting for people actually building things with these meta frameworks using SSR, because once again, people not using meta frameworks in setting up their own SSR setup, it's quite rare. And there is one more thing that people have to consider. And that's also not the scope of the benchmark, but if you talk about server-side rendering performance, it's still important. Because we took at the server side only, while the client side part is important too. And it was mentioned already before by Ryan, the hydration part, right? The hydration part and cost as well. So it would also be good to investigate how high the penalty of hydration is in terms of how much CPU power is used, how long does it take, what's the time to interactive, total blocking time, and so on, so on, um, to actually make sure how these frameworks, and there we can start with Vue, React, Svelte, Solid, and so on again, how these perform the client side after hydration. So long, how long it takes to take the things sent from the server and actually make them interactive, because that's also important for the user. But this was fully neglected here, but it's also kind of out of scope. So to conclude, what do these results mean to us? Well, it's good to know that Vue and also all the other frameworks, they're pretty close to each other, right? Except maybe with React having that big gap. Um, they're, they're doing pretty good performance. So that brings us to the question, should you really choose your framework if it has 60 requests per second more in a benchmark? Probably not. But as it is with benchmarks, it also sparks people like saying, hey, let's improve, maybe, I don't know, Svelte gets the number one, or Solid. So it's also in ways like, maybe there are some things to fine tune. We've seen that before with benchmarks around uh, server-side rendering that uh, led, for example, to a great uh, reduced memory consumption for Vue. Nevertheless, I think it's so important that before releasing such benchmarks to consult team members and authors of the framework. And it wasn't done here, sadly, because then you could avoid to like, not run React in production or have um, unnecessary style bindings and so on, so on. So uh, I think if one releases these things in public saying, hey, look, uh, this is a like full-blown um, benchmark comparison, then why not reaching out to people, give them time to look at it, comment on it, improve things, because once again, nobody can master all the frameworks and the offers, they know, of course, if it's idiomatic code, if there are some, well, improvements, optimizations that also normal people would make right when writing uh, these frameworks. Nevertheless, views on one here, others are pretty close, but yeah, that's the situation with the frameworks and benchmarks. So let me know, is that interesting to you? Do you as use SSR and are happy that you choose what you chose? Uh, and what do you think about benchmarks in general? 
drop them in the comments below. I'll read all the things and uh, I hope to see you in either one of the other videos or next week's video. So stay tuned and happy hacking. <laughs>